Last August, the Business Roundtable, an association of CEOs of America's biggest corporations, announced with great fanfare a, quote, fundamental commitment to all of our stakeholders, unquote, and not just their shareholders. They said investing in employees, delivering value to customers, and supporting outside communities is now at the forefront of their business goals, not just maximizing profits. Bullsh**. Corporate social responsibility is a farce. One business roundtable director is Mary Barra, CEO of General Motors. Just weeks after making the roundtable commitment, and despite GM's hefty profits and large tax breaks, Barra rejected workers' demands that GM raise their wages and stop outsourcing their jobs. Earlier in the year, GM shut its giant assembly plant at Lordstown, Ohio. Nearly 50,000 GM workers then staged the longest auto strike in 50 years. They won a few wage gains, but didn't save any jobs. Meanwhile, Barra was paid $22 million last year. How's that for corporate social responsibility? Another prominent CEO who made the phony business roundtable commitment is AT&T's Randall Stevenson, who promised to use the billions in savings from the Trump tax cut to invest in the company's broadband network and create at least 7,000 new jobs. Instead, AT&T has cut more than 23,000 jobs since the tax cut went into effect and is now demanding that employees train lower wage foreign workers to replace them. Oh, let's not forget Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon and its Whole Foods subsidiary. Just weeks after Bezos made the business roundtable commitment, Whole Foods announced it would be cutting medical benefits for its entire part-time workforce. The annual saving to Amazon from this cost-cutting move is roughly what Bezos, whose net worth is $117 billion, makes in a few hours. Bezos' wealth grows so quickly, this number has gone up since you started watching this video. GE's CEO, Larry Culp, is also a member of the Business Roundtable. Two months after he made the commitment to all his stakeholders, General Electric froze the pensions of 20,000 workers in order to cut costs. Culp raked in $15 million in 2018. So much for investing in employees. Next comes Dennis Muhlenberg, the former CEO of Boeing, who also committed to the phony business roundtable pledge shortly after making the commitment to deliver value to customers. Muhlenberg was fired for failing to act to address the safety problems that caused the 737 MAX crashes that killed 346 people. After the crashes, he didn't issue a meaningful apology or even express remorse to the victims' families and downplayed the severity of the fallout to investors, regulators, airlines, and the public. On his way out, he was rewarded with a $62 million farewell gift from Boeing. Oh, and the chairman of the Business Roundtable is Jamie Dimon, CEO of Wall Street's largest bank, J.P. Morgan Chase. Dimon lobbied Congress personally and intensively for the biggest corporate tax cut in history and got the Business Roundtable to join him. J.P. Morgan raked in $3.7 billion from the tax cut. Dimon alone made $31 million in 2018. That tax cut increased the federal debt by almost $2 trillion. As usual, almost nothing trickled down to America's working class and poor. Corporations used most of the tax savings to buy back their own shares of stock, generating a sugar high for the stock market. The vastly enlarged federal debt will almost surely reduce what the government can spend on schools, job training, housing, health care, social security, Medicare, and other services on which Americans rely. The truth is American corporations are sacrificing workers and communities as never before in order to further boost runaway profits and unprecedented CEO pay. Americans know this. A record 76% of U.S. adults believe major corporations have too much power, and 65% believe they make too much profit. The only way to make corporations socially responsible 
is through laws requiring them to be. For example, giving workers a bigger voice in corporate decision-making, requiring that corporations pay severance to communities they abandon, raising corporate taxes, busting up monopolies, and preventing dangerous products, including faulty airplanes, from ever reaching the light of day. If the CEOs of the Business Roundtable and other corporations were truly socially responsible, they would support such laws, not make phony promises they clearly have no intention of keeping. The only way to get such laws enacted is by reducing corporate power and getting big money out of our politics. The first step is to see corporate social responsibility for the sham it is. What do you think? Who are the other CEOs who signed the pledge and didn't follow through? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video informative, please also watch our video, The Five-Step CEO Pay Scam. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.